Psalm 91, familiar to us, and also Luke chapter number 10. So if y'all will help me, and if y'all will amen and such as that, I will try my best to preach fast this morning. Amen. A little louder, please, a little louder. I want to take a few minutes and share, it's kind of been a, a thing here lately, uh, I've just sense that the Lord wanted me to share some, you know, encouraging words, strengthening words, uplifting words. Uh, we talked about David for a couple of weeks and how he encouraged himself in the Lord. And so I just want to share an uplifting, what I believe is an uplifting word with you today. And, and the title is, is this, A Christian's Vantage Point. A Christian's Vantage Point. Obviously, uh, in contrast to a non-Christian, we have a different view. We have a different ability to see things because we see them at a different level. And I think it could certainly be argued that we see things as believers from a higher place. Is anybody with me this morning? Let me hear you. Amen. Amen. But we, we see things from a different vantage point. And uh, so we're able to see from a different perspective and and uh, I think that matters. I think it makes a big difference. And, and uh, how is it and why is it that we can do that? It's because that we have been, if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, you have been enlightened with truth. Thank you, Sister Debbie. I was waiting till it flowed across just like a wave here. Uh, but yeah, we've been enlightened with truth and we're guided in our lives by the Holy Spirit of God. So we should see things in a different way, in a different measure. We should be able to have a view that everybody else doesn't have. And that's not to suggest for a moment that we should be prideful and arrogant about such things. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying we need to recognize as believers that we do see things from a different vantage point and then we need to operate and rejoice and praise from that place. Can you give God praise this morning in this place? I normally don't do this, but I'd like to take just a moment and actually define vantage point. So vantage point, the two words together, the actual definition of that would be a position or place that affords a wide or advantageous perspective. Let me say that again. A position or place that affords a wide or advantageous perspective. In other words, it is to your advantage to be a believer and be able to see things that everybody else doesn't see. Amen? Amen. A couple of weeks ago, the men went up on Rich Mountain for men's breakfast. Guys, I would always encourage you, be a part of that. We have a good time, good food, good fellowship. And now I know in the video we showed a couple of weeks ago or maybe last week, some of the guys fell asleep out on the front, uh, front porch of the lodge up there uh, and they were snoring a bit. But we went up there and it was such a beautiful day. It was, it was wonderful, it was spectacular. As a matter of fact, the views were so good on that day that I've, part of the reason I, I made a, a statement afterwards and I've made it since then also that, that uh, this has been one of the most beautiful springs that I've ever seen. It was because of the view that we had as we were so high up looking down across Mena, looking all the way over into Oklahoma, I guess. We, we were looking a long way. It was because of the vantage point. It was because of the view that we had from an elevated position that we could see things that I never, we never could have seen from down in Mena. Amen. So it, it gave us a different perspective. It let us see other things. And I know there are some people and probably some people in here and watching that are glass half empty people. 
Some people are glass half full people. In other words, some people have a tendency to look at things from a positive perspective. Some people have a tendency to look at things from a negative perspective. Have y'all ever, were y'all ever married to, did y'all ever know anybody that was that way? <laughs> but uh, when we see things, though, from God's view, it is different. It causes us to be different. It causes us to act different. It causes us to pray differently. It causes us to be somebody that we could not be for any other reason. Give God praise today, if you will. <laughs> thankful for a view from the Bible. I'm thankful for a view from truth. Amen. I want to share a few things, a few thoughts, a few scriptures with you. And and uh, when we get finished this morning, and again, we'll kind of hurry through this, but when we get finished, I want you to decide, I want you to decide this, am I, not speaking to me, talking about each one of us, are you, am I a person who realizes the power of having the right vantage point, seeing things through the eyes of God, if you will. Let's go to Luke chapter number 10. I love this portion of scripture. I wanted to share it with you. Today, verse number one, after these things, the Lord appointed 70 others also and sent them two by two before his face into every city and place where he himself was about to go. So he sent them out in advance and then they reported back. Skip down to verse number 17, though. I, I love this. Then the 70 returned with joy. They were happy. They went out and they returned with joy saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. Talking about our vantage point today, they had a revelation given to them when they saw that even the demons were subject to them in the Lord's name. Verse number 18, and he said, I love this. He said, I saw Satan. Jesus is speaking. He says, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. He fell so fast. He looked like a fireball from the sky, blacked his eyes, skinned his nose up. He hobbled around for six weeks. I just added all that in there for free. Imagination kicked in just a little bit. I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Jesus had the right vantage point. Jesus saw it. I, I didn't see it, but I can see it. I can imagine it since Jesus gives us truth. I didn't see it then, but I can bet you one thing. It wasn't a smooth landing. Amen. Verse number 19. Behold, I give you. He's speaking truth to us. He says, behold, I give you the authority. This is stuff we need to take in, okay? Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Amen? And give me that next word. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. Can you give God praise this morning? Are you getting the truth today, what the Word of God says? I just want to bring you some good news from heaven today. Everything's going to be all right. Everything is going to be all right. You will overcome. The graduates even here today, you're going to face some things in your life. You will overcome as so long as you keep grounded and rooted in Jesus Christ. Amen. We'll overcome. You're going to excel. Amen. You'll always be more than a conqueror so long as you keep your sights on Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Based upon the Bible, let me give you just a few things that I believe. Y'all believe things? Uh, based upon the Bible, I want to give you a few things that I believe today. I believe in Almighty God. I believe he has a son named Jesus Christ. I believe in his church. 
I believe he is building his church right now. I believe in prayer. I believe in the armor of God. I believe in faith. I believe in redemption. I believe in victory over Satan. I believe in spiritual warfare. I believe in the power of the Holy Ghost. I believe in true revival. I believe in reconciliation. I believe in forgiveness. Somebody give me a witness this morning. I believe in holiness. I believe in sanctification. I believe in grace. I believe in truth. I believe in the Word of God today. I believe in the renewing of the mind by that same Word. I believe in freedom. I believe in moving past the past into the future. I believe in peace. And I believe in salvation that could take a sin-stained heart and could wash it white as snow with a blood of Jesus Christ. Would somebody give him praise this morning? In case you're wondering, I believe that Jesus Christ, the holy, the righteous, the strong, invincible, undeniable, ever-present, all-powerful Son of God, he's doing just fine this morning. Amen, somebody. Have you ever, this is a little far out, have you ever woke up in the morning, maybe talk to God in the mornings, have you ever woke up in, in the morning and said, Lord, how are you doing today? You know, we usually ask God for things for ourselves, but have you ever woke up in the morning and said, Lord, how are you, today? How are you doing today? I, I have an idea of some things that, you know, if we ask the Lord uh, things like that, maybe what the answers to a question like that or questions like that would be. So in case you're wondering, the Lord, I'm just going to speak kind of for him today, if I can. In case you're wondering, the Lord is doing just fine. He's not throwing in the towel. He's not giving up. He's not surprised. He's not caught off guard. Amen. He's not weighing other options because his blood, Jesus Christ's blood, is enough. It always has been. It always will be. We're serving the King of kings and Lord of lords who made a way where there was no other way. Amen. He is as determined as ever to save the United States of America. He is determined as ever to change the hearts of sinners in this world. He is as determined as ever to free those who are in chains and in bondage today. Amen, somebody. He is as determined as ever to heal those who are wounded, to heal the brokenhearted this morning. Amen. And he's as determined as ever that he's coming to catch his bride away very, very soon. Give him praise again today. What I'm about to say may not make the nightly news, but it's true. God is still on the throne. He is still on the throne, and Jesus is right there with him. Amen? The Holy Ghost is everywhere I look. You say, well, I don't see him. He's there anyway. Well, I, I can't feel him. He's there anyway. Amen? I can look to the east, and he's there. I can look to the west. I can look to the north. I can look to the south, and God Almighty is there. Amen, somebody? He's in the space station today. Did you know that? And whether we really want to admit it or not, he's ever, even in the United States Capitol. Amen. He's there. He's everywhere. Somebody give God praise this morning. Some people are counting God out, but I'm counting him in. He's on the move today, amen? amen. I have an anchor, and it's not found in CNN or Fox News. I have a source, and it's not Uncle Sam. I have a life, and it's because, and it's through the breath of the Almighty. Amen. I have a home. I've not seen it with my eyes, but I know it's there. It's somewhere beyond the blue. Amen. I'm ready to go there. Amen. My citizenship is in heaven. My calling is on this earth. My hope is in Christ's resurrection. My strength is in my salvation that he has purchased for me. My happiness is found in him. Can I get a witness this morning? My trials have been overcome by him. Amen. I have tasted and found that he is good. Amen. I have tried him and I've found him to be faithful. I wish somebody would help me preach this morning. Amen. I fell down and he picked me up. I slipped and he steadied my feet. I felt lost and he showed me the way. I lost my joy but he gave me a new song. 
Does anybody hear what I'm talking about today? Somebody might be listening to this today or watching it later and they say, that preacher's lost and no, I found it. I have found him. I have found a fountain that flows and never runs dry. I have found a protector who surrounds me at the first sign of trouble. He's always there. He's always protecting my life. I have found an advocate who pleads my case with the grace purchased by his own blood. Is anybody with me this morning? I found a strategic planner who designed my footsteps before he ever made my feet. Amen. Amen, somebody. I found an encourager. I found a friend, Brother Tim. Amen. I found one, I found someone that I can be buddies with. Amen. He can be my Lord. He can be my Savior, my King, and my Master. But he can be also my friend. I found somebody I can talk to and I can share things with in confidence. Amen. Let me share. Can I share a couple more things with you? I've got four minutes. He's my physical mechanic when my body gets all messed up. Brother Linda Lida. When I'm tired, he's there to strengthen me. He's there to fix me. He's my brain surgeon when my mind is weary. He's my scissors when my wings need clipped. Uh huh, that's a good place to say amen or oh me, one or the other. He's my bread when I'm hungry, he's my water when I'm thirsty. Are y'all with me this morning? He's my microwave when I need it fast. And he's my slow cooker when it's best if it takes a while. Yeah. Amen, because he knows best. When I keep it in perspective, I can't help but sing, sing songs like, What a Mighty God We Serve. We sang a couple of old songs, I think, Brother Tom, this morning. I love that. Uh, Brother Manuel Boy, there's few of you in this place that know who I'm talking about. He used to sing a song, an old song. Back when we used books, we had books. We used, some of you don't know this. We had books we used to sing out of. <laughs> How many of you remember the books? And uh, Brother Manuel Boyd passed away many years ago, but he sang this song, Like a Mighty Sea. Like a Mighty Sea comes the love of Jesus sweeping over me. I mean, some of those songs are, are just incredible. How about this one? When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Amen. Can you give a God a praise for that this morning? We sang a song a while ago about fear is a liar. Let me give you, let me give you a portion of scripture about that. Psalm 91. Y'all ever read that? Y'all ever heard of that before? Let's go. Psalm, Psalm chapter 91, verse number 1. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In Him I will trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and your buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night. Can I get a witness today? Nor of the arrow that flies by day. How many of you felt like some, some arrows been hitting you lately? Verse number six, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. Verse seven, a thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right side, but it shall not come near you. Amen. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Verse 9, because you have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the most high your dwelling place. Verse number 10, no evil shall befall you. You know, you need to take some of these things to heart. Amen. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you. To keep. If you're ever in a, in a bad situation, you just need to stand on some of these verses. 
He shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways in their hands. They shall bear you up lest you dash your foot against a stone. Verse 13, you shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent. You shall trample underfoot because he has set his love upon me. Therefore, I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver, deliver him and honor him. Verse 16, with long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. I've come to tell somebody today as another word from heaven that God's going to take care of you no matter what you face in life. You go ahead and press on through. You go ahead and press on, as Sister Sandra always says, and God will be there for you every single time. Give him praise this morning. <laughs> to keep it in perspective, as a believer, you are established. You are planted. You are called. As a believer, you are sent. You are gifted. You are chosen. You are equipped. You are connected. You are positioned where you need to be for God to use you to win people on planet earth to him. Give God praise again today. Let's press on for the glory of God. Amen. Stand with me if you would, if I can have the Musicians, come back today. I don't know if my clock's fast. I have 12.02, but I think we're doing all right. Amen. Amen. I pray today that each and every one of us will recognize and realize the vantage point that we're given. We're given as children of God. Is there anybody in here that's ever been discouraged? Can I see your hand? Uh, yeah, I've been there. It's no good. You ever been discouraged? It's tough. Well, Donnie, you ever been discouraged? Sarah? Linda Wayne Keller? I, I, you know, Linda Wayne Keller, he's one of these guys, he seems to always be on the mountaintop. And I, I appreciate God's blessing upon his life. One of the greatest soul winners I think I've probably ever met. But even Linda Wayne Keller's been discouraged before. But he's here today. You all are here today because we've all been there. You're here today because we have a Savior who paid the price. Not only that our sins could be forgiven, that's the greatest miracle, but not only that, but that we could live a life of victory. Yes. Amen. Sister Barb, have you ever been discouraged? Sure have, Sister Barb says. But you've got faith. Amen. There's this thing when we realize I have faith, I have favor, I have trust, I have hope that Sister Elizabeth, whatever we go through, God's there with us. Julie, whatever we go through, God's there with us. Virginia, whatever we go through. Lakey is not here today. Lakey has is, is, uh, had to be home today in the group home, but she's one of the greatest worshipers like these ladies right here from the group home. One of the greatest worshipers. She couldn't be here today. You know, I just hope that, I hope that God is just reaching down and encouraging her today, because we love Lakey. We love Lakey so very much. But everybody that goes through stuff, I want you to know, Jesus is for you. You're going to win. You're going to overcome. You will be victorious. Amen? Amen. Father, today, thank you for your goodness. Lord, for everyone who is here and everyone who... Everyone who God is uh, struggling even, Lord, I ask you that you would touch. Lord, for those today that would, Lord, say, I need sins forgiven in my life. Lord, I ask you to speak to their hearts right now and change their lives. 
Lord God, I, I ask that you would, Lord, prompt us to call out to you and just talk to you. Lord God, just talk to you and say, Lord Jesus, I, I need my sins forgiven. Lord, I failed you. I messed up. But Lord, today, I'm making things new with you. I'm making things new with you today. Hallelujah. Lord, today, God, I thank you for, Lord, the trust that we can have in you. I thank you for the vantage point that we can have. That, Lord God, when we go through struggles, we remember. It's like, God, we can go back and we can recall and remember, Lord God, that our vantage point tells us, Lord, that as we are looking from a different level, we can see who we really are in Christ. We can see fresh and new what you have done for us. So, Lord God, I thank you for that. In the mighty name of Jesus. Is there anybody here today with no one looking around? Is there anyone that would say, Pastor, I need prayer today. Uh, maybe you need sins forgiven. Maybe you need uh, help. Whatever it is. Is there anybody that would say, I, I specifically need help. I need prayer. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Who else today? I need help. Yes. Hallelujah. Father God, you look upon our hearts. You look upon our lives. And Lord God, these that have raised their hand today, thank you, God, for you see a hand before it ever goes up. You saw a hand going up today before it was ever formed in their mama's womb. So thank you, Lord God, that you've got it all under control. And we ask you, Lord God, specifically that you minister to these today. And we give you praise for it all in the mighty and wonderful name of Jesus Christ. And everybody said...